Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training. Today topic we are going to discuss on LAN Layer 2. Let's start our part 2. Let's go to the Switch 1 here. Alright, so in Switch 1 when I do a display MAC address, currently there is no MAC address currently is being learned, it's already edged out. Let me try to make sure it learns some MAC address. I'm pinging from client 1 to client 2. 1131 so 1131 is here so I go back to switch number one I do a display MAC address as you can see from here this MAC address is a dynamic so I'm going to turn this port which is a Ethernet 0010 to a secure uh, dynamic so this is how I'm going to configure firstly I need to go to the uh, Ethernet uh, 0010 and going to enable the port security Alright, so there you go. So I have enabled the post security and I'm going to configure the, the post security protect action. So we have three actions here, protect, restrict and shutdown. Now assuming that you are going to do a protect, the new MAC address that you limit will not be uh, learned. Alright, restrict will actually send a trap to your NMS and the shutdown basically as its name suggests is just shutdown. So assuming that I'm going to do a shutdown, and I'm going to say that the port security, the maximum MAC address, uh, sorry, the maximum MAC address number I'm going to learn is one. So let me do a display this. So uh, this is where you have the uh, port security enabled. You can see that it keep on popping up. Let me undo the terminal monitor first. Okay, there you go. Let me go to interface. 010 all right so this is my configuration so if I do a display MAC address right you can see that it's still in a dynamic mode that no right so I'm going to do this I'm going to change this into let's say for 57 I'm going to change to 99 okay and I'm going to apply I'm going to do a ping you can see that I cannot ping anymore because the maximum MAC address that I learned securely is only one. So if I go back into my switch, all right. Okay, so again, you can see that I have here, type here is a security, all right. And uh, when I do a display MAC address security, all right, so that will be my Ethernet 0, 0. Alright, so it will be the same, just I show it to you. Alright, so it's secure. So what I need to do here is, um, I already secured it based on the earlier one. Okay, it's supposed to be 6657. Okay, so if I'm going to change back to 57 here. Okay, so now it's changed back to 57. I'm going to do a ping. As you can see that because the protect action here is shut down, okay, so it still do not allow me to, to connect unless what I need to do is I have to, sorry, go back to switch number one. Alright, so you can see that um, I'm using 57 back again and if I do a 0010, you notice that it's gone already. So what I need to do here is to go back into the interface. Alright, you can see that it's down. 0010. Okay. So notice that it's understood it down. Now it's not that I shut it down, it's because that the port security shut it down. So let me go to the interface 0010. Okay. As you can see that it's actually shut down. It's not by me, but it's actually by the port security. Undo shut. Okay. Alright, so now we come back. Let me try to ping. Okay. Just wait for a while because I also have the uh, app proxy enabled here. Alright, so let me check here. Okay, seems to be fine and let me delete the up let me ping again let 
and try to go to two. Yep, it's working. All right. I believe that is because of the up proxy. All right. So you can see that it's working. It just needs some time for it to recover it back. So here we have our uh, port security, as I mentioned here. Okay. So we are using a secure dynamic. Now, if you want to configure as a sticky, you can just configure this command port security MAC address. You just type there sticky. Okay, so from now on, uh, those uh, MAC address that have here, even though you restart, you will not need to relearn. Okay, so you can see that this is a sticky here. All right. Now, let's look into the MAC address flapping. Right, so MAC address flapping occur when a MAC address is learned by two interfaces in the same VLAN and the MAC address entry learn later overwrite the earlier one. So for example, here I have switch number two. Both the uh, PC1 and PC2 belong to the same VLAN and both of them uh, belong to the same MAC address. So assuming that if let's say port number one, this is the first one that they switch to learn and later on, uh, PC3 uh, plug into the switch and the switch will learn that the port is actually port number two instead of port number one. All right, so here we have the uh, MAC address table that is flapping. Now for us to prevent this uh, MAC address flapping, right, because this one can be an attack. All right, so we can uh, use a solution uh, with the MAC address learning with the priority. The priority interface can be from lowest to uh, zero, all right, to the highest is the three. So three is the highest. So the number that is higher number that is better in terms of priority. So with the MAC address anti-flapping, we can prevent MAC address overriding the interface with the same priority. So Another reason why we have the MAC address flapping detection is due to this scenario. Now, as you can see on this topology, I have a switch number one, number two, number three, and number four. And assuming that the um, loop detection, such as SDP, are uh, disabled, so what will happen over here is, assuming that I have a connection between two and four, uh, what will happen here is, if let's say there is no MAC address flapping detection, we can actually develop a loop. So uh, with the MAC address flapping detection, we can prevent this because once they detected that there is a MAC address flapping, we can uh, perform an action such as to put the uh, port into the error. So the switch can detect MAC address flapping during the learning stage. A loop may occur and uh, this loop can be uh, cause a, a real issue in the network. So let's jump into our lab and see how the MAC address detection uh, perform. In here I have added one client, client tree. All right, so as you can see that client tree IP address is 1133. The existing client is still 1131. But what I have done here is that the um, MAC address are changed to quad A. Double three, double three, double three, double three. All right. So with the new client, I also configure the same MAC address, but I connecting through the port number eleven. So if I go back into the um, switch number three in the port number eleven, as you can see that this one is a VLAN number three. All right. So early on, I only have the uh, port number ten. So let me show you here. Port number 10 and 11, both of them are belong to VLAN 3. And having said so, now remember that both of these having the same MAC address. Okay. Right. So what will happen over here is if let's say I am in client 2, I'm pinging to 1132, which is my uh, IP address on this interface. You can see that it's pinging fine. And when I do a display MAC address table, uh, you can see that this is my MAC address, all right, so that is a VLAN tree. Okay, there's no issue, so far so good. Now, assuming that now, uh, I'm going to bring up this client, all right, and this client having an IP address of 1133, so let me do a ping to 1.1.3.2. Okay, so 1132, all right, so let it work for a while and see what will happen here. 
okay display MAC address okay so we are still at 10 all right I think that uh, we just have to wait for a while for it to fully um, able to ping okay there you have it now you can see that after a while you're able to ping right so if I go into here now what you can see from here it said that Mac address is actually flapping it's actually flat between number 10 to 11 now just now the uh, switch learned it from number 10 so if I'm going to do a display Mac address again you can see that now it's become 11 all right so assuming that now I'm going to do a ping one more time as you can see that now client 2 able to ping all right so if I do a Mac address you can see that it jumped back to 10 and if I'm going to do a ping from here one more time again you can see it's pinging and uh, this time it's go to 11 now one way for us to prevent this from happening is to enable the MAC address learning now assuming that now I go into the uh, Ethernet 0010 I'm going to make sure that this one have higher priority so what I need to do is I'm going to use a MAC learning priority the priority is from 0 to 3 now I can just increase by slightly to 1 because by default is 0 and that's what I need to do alright so uh, I'm actually configured that on 10 so when I do a display MAC address okay so currently it's 11 so if I'm going to do a ping here it's working alright so if I go back to here I'm ping here you can see that it's timeout now now the reason is because that I limit the address learning to have a higher priority on the um, port number 10 there you have it now you also can see from here my address flapping okay and look into the record so as you can see from here it does flap okay so uh, prior than this I actually did a little bit of a demo, uh, the internal demonstration so you can see that the port origin from 10 and 11 is actually flap and it's also record the time as well right Let's look into Ethernet link aggregation principle. All right. So, um, in this uh, link aggregation, we are going to look into some of the uh, topic here. First, we are going to look into the basic concept of the uh, link aggregation, or in Huawei we call it a trunk. Okay. So we are going to examine the forwarding principle of the Ether trunk. How the Ether trunk do load balancing? what type of mode that we have and how do we implement LACP or link aggregation control protocol so let's start with the uh, basic concept of the link aggregation so link aggregation bundle multiple phys physical link to form a logical link so the maximum physical link that we have is uh, eight links that we can bundle in one logical link now we have a condition here is that both devices of the ether trunk must use the same number of physical interface which means that the physical interface rate must be the same the duplex mode must be the same uh, if you have one of the interface support jumbo then the rest have to support jumbo as well as the flow control if you have turned on then the rest have to be turned on now the main purpose of the link aggregation is to increase the bandwidth improve the reliability and implement load balancing now for this example if you look into this topology i have switch one and switch two i have three of these interface bundled together now assuming that each of these interface is one gigabit so if i'm going to bundle together i have two gigabit all right two gigabit now here we can configure what we call the ether trunk so we put all these three physical into one logical now here we also have an option to run what we call LACP link aggregation control protocol here we can set the upper threshold for the number of active interfaces as well as we can set the lower threshold for the number of uh, active interfaces uh, what it means over here is assuming that now I have three interfaces if I'm going to do a ether trunk together the upper threshold basically said that if I'm going to use the maximum uh, active link 
So assuming that I have a maximum of two, so if I have three, only two of them will be active. The other one will use as a backup. All right, so we can set the upper threshold. Whereas we also have a list active link number. Now with the list uh, active link number, assuming that again I have three physical interface, I'm going to do a, a list active. Assuming that if I'm going to do a list active is two, and assuming that two of these interface go down and I only have one. Now since I request for two, then the whole ether trunk will fail. Okay, so the ether trunk in this case will uh, show that it is not. Uh, working anymore. So this is the two concept of upper threshold and the lower threshold. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.